Sorry, if you're happy, the lights or you wanna dim it down. Maybe I think I'll dim it down when I start. After I walk by, like cinema mode. Because actually, it's really like the. Oh, okay. I'm quite happy actually. Oh, okay.
Everyone. So, hi, I'm Raven. I'm an ambitious president for India Tiger. So, I will. Okay. So, everyone, thank you guys for coming down today. I mean, like, it's a deal. I mean, you can just go outside. But you guys do take care to get more of an idea and I'm really excited to get it. Um, maybe just to start off, like, a show of hands. How many of you guys heard of us uh, before? How many of you guys are freshies? Wow. Okay. okay, so who and how many of you guys have heard of us before or understand what kind of what we do before coming? Okay, cool. Um, well, thanks for having me. And I think today I really want to share what we do, why we do what we do, and how you can like engage with us and join our event. Um, I think we're still waiting for a few people. So, um, this like maybe two more minutes and then I'll start. Okay, thank, thanks for everything. I thank you. Okay, hey, everyone. Um, so, we're going to get started now. Uh, so, once again, I'm Raven, and I'm the current president of NUS Hacker. And together with my 14 members who are here, um, today we're just going to share more about what we do. Um, so, I have a presentation and then maybe some Q&A for, like, for you guys to ask questions about us. And finally, we'll have some details that you guys later on. Good. So, to start off, I think I want to share more about hacker culture. So, NUS Hackers is a club that aims to spread hacker culture among all NUS students. So, what is hacker culture? And what is hacking? So, I think this is what you think of nowadays if you Google hacking, right? Some guy hunts through a computer and just typing away and trying to break into some um, FBI administration or something. But this is not who we are, and this is not what hacker culture represents. If you're looking for that, you have our friends at any event we have, and you can sort of find them. But what the hacker culture really is, is the culture of individuals who try to creatively 
solve problems and overcome limitations by building stuff that's cool and interesting and clever. Here's an example. So this is actually the MIT Big Go building, the biggest building. And what a bunch of hackers in MIT decided to do was to just keep stuff out. So you might wonder how they got there and how they actually managed to get a whole car out of the building. And that's part of the process, right? Like they solved the problem of getting the car out there by sort of breaking it down and building it up on top of the great dome building. So this was another hacking that I went to building, and this was to celebrate Avengers Endgame. And so this is what the hackers and MRT decided to do to make it into a giant Captain America too. Yeah, so if you want to find out more about that hack, you can go over the hack at MIT.edu. So hopefully that illustrates some examples about what we've been hacking. And perhaps ask the question, why did you don't want to hack in the first place? And honestly, after thinking about it myself for such a long time, it's really a simple answer. Because it's fun. Like, I think that solving problems in creative ways is really, really fun. And also, because you just can. Like, problems are there to be solved, and yeah, you can solve them, and so why not? Um, this is one of our inspirations. So this is Lionel Popper. Um, he actually created a really, really popular operating system called Lina. And what you might have known is that Lina actually started off as a side project, just for fun. You can see that it's just a hobby. It won't be big. It's like um, big or professional or anything else. But fast forward to nowadays, and it's like, yeah, like that. Like, it's one of the biggest operating systems in the world. And this all came on, on like, a weekend hack like this. And this is what we believe that everyone and all of us can do, which is to spread the hacker culture in this way. Okay, maybe not in this situation. So what does this mean? Why, why uh, how does hacking happen in the US, right? So I'm sure all of you, um, this is not expect many of you are very good. I'm sure all of you have used any US mods before. So how did any mods come about? It was actually a side project by this person called Wayne, and he decided to solve the problem of high table services. Now, at that point in time, in 2011, there were already high table services. The problem was already solved. But he decided that, hey, it's going to be a fun project to do over the weekend and just build any US mod, which is a better time table to do, because you can. And fast forward to now, we have this massive application used by every single engineering student. How many of you have not heard about engineering mods before? Oh, okay. Everyone? <laughs> oh, you've used it? Okay, cool. Yeah. So here's another one. So maybe like five years ago, um, anyone used to use um, a previous version of Tangler, which is Lumia. And it was buggy and it was slow and um, basically it, was, it didn't work for me. So someone decided to reverse engineer the API used by Lumia and come up with something way better than they wanted to. Um, the project was called Lumia and actually made out of the word F and Lumia. So you can sort of guess what the meaning is. And I guess as a little inspiration, I don't think currently we have Tangler. And I don't think it's a bit buggy and slow as well. So, which of you is going to come up with the new? Okay, maybe the link works well as well. I guess F can work. And that sort of leads us to who we are as NUS hackers and who we want to be, which is to encourage NUS students to do something and to do anything. And as you can see later in our this is what we're trying to encourage in NUS. So we do a bunch of stuff at the NUS campus, and what we do are mostly different. So here are the events that we have. We have talks, where right? we have some workshops, and some programs, and we don't have to do. So I'll basically be going through some of the workshops that we do, and how you can take part in them. So firstly, this is Friday Hack. So Friday Hack, as the name suggests, is on Friday. Every Friday we invite speakers who think are really cool, speakers every Friday, to come down and share about what they think and why they find it Basically, these are exemplary examples of hackers that we see in the world around us. So for example, if you've done web development before, um, there's a really popular way to do web development called QGS and B. And this is actually the creator of QGS and B. We invited him down maybe three years ago to share more about how his story and how he started this project. I'm not sure 
en ese año no, no vio un video. En ese año un capítulo de YouTube, digamos, uh, un video. Sí, es un video que se me va a decir que no es un video que se me va a decir que no es un video que se me va a decir que no es un video que se me va a decir que no es un video que se me va a decir que no es un video que se me va a decir que no es un video que se me va a decir que no es un video que se me va a decir que no es un video que se me So, Friday night happens every Friday in the evening, and we also stay this tight line for everyone who talks about Friday night to talk about the pizza, stay for the inspiration. So, every Friday at 7 p.m., there will be two speakers and pizza. Um, but as a little teaser, this is what we have planned for next Friday. Um, we have Eugene coming down to share more about his job at Open Government Products, and as well as um, Professor Dongu. Will share more about such innovation. This is about his research. Um, and he's basically he's a great guy, and I've taken lessons from him before. And he'll share more about like what he does in his research. So moving on to our second event, this is Hacker School. And as the name suggests, it is a series of workshops where you can come down and learn the intro to anything. So we believe that we want knowledge to be for everyone, and so we try to teach them in our weekly workshops. So these are some examples of workshops we've done in the past. We introduced HTS, which is a website builder. We introduced Python, machine learning, uh, fiscal currency, and game development. So we try to do something interesting and cool every week, and hopefully we can share more about like, how to do these things. So it's every Thursday on 7 p.m. this semester. And perhaps as a teaser, this is what we have next week. It's introduction to electronic music production, and this is collaboration with NUS Electronic Music Lab. So, if you're interested in, I guess, electronic music production, please come down and we also have some refreshments as well. Another workshop that we have, and perhaps this is a bit more niche, is Hackers to Box. So, Hackers to Box is sort of trying to cover all the important stuff that school does not teach you, and stuff that school is really, really useful for hackers. For example, this is the text editor that a lot of us use. Um, this is an important way to collaborate. Um, there's the cell shooting and also the text, which is how we write reports, our research papers as well. So these are more, a bit more niche and stuff that you can come out to one workshop and just learn from scratch. So at two weeks from now, we have the first workshop for Hackers to Box called Virtual Machine. So come learn about that and how to set up like virtual machines. So I think for those of you who are familiar with uh, hackers, we actually didn't have to do that last year. But uh, what we're trying to do now is help you guys, any of you, contribute to open source projects in any We believe that hacking and open source have a lot in common where you're building solutions, solving problems in collaboration with people. And so we want to help you take your first step in contributing to the top of open source projects in NUS. So what are these things? There's NUS Mod. We have Cosrex, which says cost agency. And we have Loveliness, which is kind of a new application to download files and campus. So these projects are what we have to start on. And this is a completely new initiative this time. So imagine you come down as a laptop. You will come out on basic JavaScript skills and you have access to the maintainers of all these projects to come out and answer your questions and immediately give you like things to contribute. For example, hey, um, you can add a new button and then you something. And in one, maybe four hour session, three hour session, you can have your button show up on anywhere.com, for example. So this will be happening next Wednesday. So do look out for our announcement on that. So I just said a lot of stuff, and um, we have done a lot of work on the past. And so this is how you can access them. We have an archive of all our recordings in the past workshop, and also we have some resources on getting started in hacking on our team. So these are links, so you can just visit them on your browser. Yeah, so for example, this is our archive. We've done introductions to Rust, JavaScript, Python, and so on. And other things, and there's always the resources there and the recordings right on our website. Moving on.
moving on to second row. So how many of you guys have heard of second row? How many of you have participated in second row? Oh, okay, nice. So hack and roll is actually our annual hackers flagship hackathon that happens every year in January. So semester two, week one. So it's 24 hours of fun and happy where you come down with your friends, you come down with maybe an idea or no idea of what you're doing, and just try to pass for 24 hours and build something really, really cool. So you can see these are some pictures from yeah, it's really common. Um some of the VR, some of the hook up. Um, Someone wearing a weird glove, but basically you can look whatever you want, and I'll share with you some of the projects that we do in the past. So, Hack and Roll is the largest human run hackathon in Singapore, and it happens every year. Um, here are some stats from the past, from this year's version of Hack and Roll. We have 600 plus participants. We invited 86 judges. These are all judges from the industry, alumni, to come down and see what projects are interested. So this is us, 40, 47 organizers of Hack and Roll. So we bought 120 pizza boxes. Uh, this is the smallest level we have of uh, our organizing team. Um, and okay, it's not 2.85 meters long, but like this is an example of how many pizzas we bought. Uh, we gave out a lot of swag from our sponsors. So yeah, we gave out yeah, a lot of swag. And we this time we brought down a bridge so we can keep our drinks full, but we managed to give out 1,500 drinks. Uh, we found one AI broker that helped you manage to waste at the same time. And we also found a giant hand. So if any of y'all were paying attention, like this is the same as the logo at this time. Had, this team managed to build like a couple of hands that took our logo. It was really nice. Um, here's a quick link to check out some of the projects that we had last year. Um, yeah, leave it there for a while. Yeah, so in Hack and Roll, we really try to be open to all sorts of projects. When we say build anything, we mean it. And this is some of the prices that we have to show. So, um, so we have everything from most socially useful hacks to most commonly useful hacks and everything in between. We have the most useful hack and most many things hack and, and so on and so forth. And for beginners, we have best beginner hack as well. Uh, so here, here are some examples of the projects that were created last year. So this is boxing, where you try to say, uh, try to box someone over Zoom, and get the points there, and yeah, you just like computer vision and stuff. This is a capture where every time you uh, try to visit a new page on your browser, it makes you do a capture. And uh, for example, if you have to wear a right? Yeah, so this was probably under the most useless hack, obviously. But uh, unless you guys enjoy this kind of thing. Um, so there's also some AI projects. For example, too long delivery is when you take the book in and it generates a nice visual of what the book represents. So this is being also useless. We also had an educational TikTok generator. It's happily named Brainbox Plus. Yeah, so you can paste in some text and it will generate like an educational TikTok video. And finally, we also have hardware hacks. So this is an uh, automatic plant watering system. It's really, really cool and it was also built by people who were not interested in technology yet. So I think it was really nice. And yeah, so as a quick preview, our hack in 2025 is happening on 17 and 18 January. And you can follow up, ask for announcements, and also like how to get into the sign up because uh, we do want to know the sign up. Cool. So, those are our events. And we also run two programs in addition to these events uh, Project Mentor and Project Intern. So, Project Mentor is actually about navigating your freshman year. And this is where we assign seniors to certain students, like freshmen, sorry. And, um, Sort of help them through their journey to SOC. So, next week we'll be having our project and call the monthly. And this is where we share more, we invite someone down to share more about life in SOC and how to navigate. So, another one is project intern. So, I think a lot of us have heard about 
you know, getting a lot of internships or whatever. And I think this is like our program to help you understand why you need to get an internship, how to get an internship. Um, you can see you see one to one internship guidance. And yeah. And finally, for all the graduates here, we actually have a whole set of notes that we've prepared over the past, um, I think, five to ten years, actually. Yeah, and this is a whole collection of resources that um, we have to help you guide, guide you through your journey. Before you move to the CS direction and these courses, yeah. So, maybe to cap off everything here, our events uh, don't require any membership or sign up. So, it's open to literally everyone members of public, freshmen, seniors, non SSD students, and non NUS students as well. So everyone is really invited to come down, just look at what seems interesting to you, and then just sign up for those events specifically. Oh, and our students as well. So finally, um, so as I mentioned earlier, this, all these events are organized by first floor coffee. So these are people who are handling all the logistics behind all the events and also um, planning these events. So if you're interested in coffee, um, our recruitment actually starts next week, but you can indicate your interest first of the contact here so that we can reach out to you once we start. Cool. And finally, how do you keep track of all these announcements, right? I mentioned everything is through our announcements, and they are done mostly through our Telegram and our Instagram. So feel free to follow us. And finally, this is our website, which contains everything that I just talked about, including why we do what we do, and our events, and so on. And finally, if you guys are interested in holding your own workshop, and you want logistical support from us, for example, you want to teach something that you're really, really interested in, you can just drop us an email or an address at any of the or all. Cool. So that's all for my presentation. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. So now I think we'll move on to our QA session. So we've actually prepared uh, a QA session. Let me just turn it on. So you can ask your questions to here and I'll be um, answering them live now. Okay, we have a question now, which is, do we need any prior CS experience to be part of the team? So my answer to that is no. So in Forty and as event organizers, what we're looking out for is really people who want to contribute their ideas and to understand what we mean by actual problems, everything that we're talking about just now, and who want to contribute ideas in showing in new events or improving our current events. And also we're looking out for people with, I guess, event organizational experience. So if you've done events in the past, it would be really useful in being a member of those teams. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I will teach another question which is besides the four things. Um, does this make any use to be a casual member? And the answer is no. So you don't actually need to sign up to be a member to join our event for any event happen. Um, so you follow you follow our Telegram uh, announcement channel. All you need to do is sign up for the event that you're interested in and then just watch. So there's no like notion of formal membership. Uh, another question of can year ones be part of four teams? And the answer is yes, we've had many year ones be part of four teams. So feel free to sign up and yeah, maybe read up more about hacker culture and how you would think, how would you like to improve our events? Um, I'm receiving also some questions about whether our project, our project intern, our events and all that are available to non NUM students. And the answer is yes. So really anyone is open to um, joining our events and also for project interns, non NUM students are also welcome to apply. Yeah, so I think I'm also receiving questions about like um people are asking like if you have no CS experience, can you join our event? And the answer is of course yes, we have workshops that teach like from assuming no prior knowledge, um how to like start with Python programming or website development or app development, for example. And these are all catered towards people with no prior knowledge or no prior background. And we really welcome you to come and learn um from the speakers. There's also a question about what's the wildest project I've seen at Hack and Go. And so I think two years back, there was a team of two members that decided to build a new uh, antenna system for a tel like to simulate a telco. So like something like um, fulfill the role of like Singtel or something. So they basically got two antennas and they spread it like nearly one kilometer apart and they still managed to receive the signal across. And they did all that in 24 hours and stuff. So I think that was one of the craziest technical projects that I've ever seen. Maybe, um, does anyone have a question right now that, oh yeah. Yeah, so I think for our workshop, mostly cover the basics, and maybe I share this now that the Packers Toolbox, which covers the basics, but for more niche um, pieces of software, um, so every Friday, um, we have Friday Tech, and that usually is more technical topics than usually. Yeah, so as I mentioned now, Friday Tech, so these are really more technical talks 
So the, the teachers are usually engineers or like researchers, and they know really more into the detail about what they're doing, and that's where you could perhaps take some learning from. Anyone else has any questions that they would like to ask? Yes? I think the antenna Wi Fi one probably not. Yeah, but I think um, what we try to do is teach as many people as possible to make it programming skills, and then hopefully in semester two they can join Hack and Go. Um, I can't give you an exact answer to the question because we never asked um, the participants like, specifically whether they learn from our workshops. But definitely, if you have no current experience right now and you want to uh, sort of pick up some skills before you join a hackathon, then definitely attend our workshop and we will teach you the basics that you need to join the hackathon. Yeah. Uh, yes, one question at the back. We mostly do software workshops right now, but um, yeah, keep a look out. We might do a hardware workshop. We are still planning some of the later workshops that we have for this semester. Uh, and perhaps on that point, if you are like knowledgeable in hardware right now and you love to give a workshop on hardware, definitely reach out to us on our email and we can arrange it for you. So, email is. Any more questions? Okay, perhaps then I'll answer one last question, uh, which is the most upvoted question in the Q&A, which is what pizza do you guys get? And so now I invite everyone to find out what pizza we got by going out of bed and Grabbing some pizza that we prepared for you today. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, if you guys have any questions you want to ask, like in person, uh, most of the coffee channels are very interested. You can just come and approach any one of us and ask us the questions. Yeah.